Hi, and welcome to the 2018 season kickoff meeting for Beaches Sea Turtle Patrol. We're holding the meeting online because even though most of our supporters are located in Northeast Florida, we do have donors from across the country that don't get a chance to attend any of our meetings. In 2017, we had donors from Arizona, California, Illinois, Maine, Missouri, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Texas, and District of Columbia. Hi, everybody. BSTP is an all-volunteer nonprofit corporation working for the preservation of endangered sea turtles in Atlantic, Neptune, and Jacksonville beaches, which is located in Duval County, Florida. We work under the direction of the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission Marine Turtle Program. All of the activities that we conduct are supervised by the holder of the marine turtle permit and must be authorized by Florida Fish and Wildlife. We are the only FWC authorized turtle patrol in Atlantic, Neptune, and Jacksonville Beach. In 2017, we were just 30 volunteers from over 2,000 across the state of Florida. Here's a picture of the team from 2016. Our volunteers go through several phases of training. The first training is phase one, which is a minimum of four sessions consisting of basic field training. It includes home study materials, species identification, nest and crawl characteristics, and adult and sea turtle hatchlings. Phase two consists of classroom and advanced field work, and those progressing on to be authorized on the permit are required to attend FWC workshops for nesting and stranding. Usually in February, February and March, we assess our needs for the upcoming season, and we will post it on our website and Facebook page if we have slots available. And if we do, we'll open up the volunteer application. You can fill it out, and we will come matching available slots. Our goal is to keep the sea turtle population from experiencing a downward trend, which could be irreversible by reducing the disturbance and harassment of nesting sea turtles through educating the public about the hazards of nighttime beach activities and increasing the hatchling survival rate by educating the public about the dangers of lighting human intervention and contributing data to the Sea Turtle Stranding and Salvage Network and Florida Fish and Wildlife. We conduct daily surveys at dawn to find new nests, and new crawls, identify anything that has occurred overnight, monitor and repair existing nests, and collect the data that is required by Fish and Wildlife. We also collect data for the University of Georgia's Northern Recovery Unit Loggerhead DNA Project. When we find a nest, we build the nest perimeter with protective materials, which could include screening for predator control, light barriers, or webbing. Each nest is monitored carefully every day throughout the, it's the incubation period for signs of disturbances. After the nest is incubated and the hatchlings have emerged, we conduct evaluations and count the remaining eggshells and any hatchlings that are left in the nest. All of the data is reported to Fish and Wildlife and we make the results available to our nest adopters. We hold two, two annual beach cleanups every year, July 5th and International Coastal Cleanup Day, which occurs on the second Saturday in September. For both of those cleanups, we partner with the City of Jacksonville and Keep Jacksonville Beautiful to provide bags and gloves for partners. There are also some groups throughout the year that do their own cleanups, and sometimes they ask us, like this Brownie Troop did, to come do a field presentation for them which we did. They were a bunch of great kids and we really appreciate their efforts. We have a couple of student teams led by our BSTP volunteer to go in and monitor the beach for these deep pits left behind by beach visitors. In 2015, we had discovered this turtle upside down in a hole, luckily after she had nested. We were able to dig her out with the help of volunteer lifeguards, and we have our um, our YouTube channel has video of her rescue if you would like to see that. We have an outreach team 
that works all year long in addition to the normal field work during nesting season. We participate in many community outreach and educational events and we also go into schools, do presentations for all student levels and we also conduct exhibits and presentations for civic and corporate events. We facilitate dozens of outreach events throughout the year at schools and community events like Dancing in the Street, Manatee Festival at Jacksonville Zoo, and in 2017 we did over two dozen. We also have a light team that goes out to evaluate potential issues, provide educational information, coordinate with city officials for problem areas, and we, we report disorientations to Fish and Wildlife. The turtle that you saw on the pit a few slides ago inspired our beach signage project, which has just been completed, and just about every access in Atlantic, Neptune, and Jacksonville Beach has these awareness signs. They were partially funded by a grant from the American Association of Zookeepers. We had support from Jacksonville Zoo and Gardens and also CustomSigns.com. We appreciate the cities of Jacksonville Beach, Atlantic Beach, and Neptune Beach for posting these at their accesses. While strictly not a BSTP project, it was led by one of our volunteers, Sea Oak Planning in the Dunes last year. Kevin Brown, who's a marine science teacher at Fletcher High School and a BSTP volunteer, has organized his marine science club students into a project to plant the dunes. Here's how they do it. Okay, first step of this process is that we identify the coordinates of where we want to put the holes. We do that by putting a rope down and we have um, indicated foot notches. You see them, they're augging the holes. The holes are about two to three inches deep. And our next step would be to insert the propagal in the augged holes. Now these two guys will continue to create a pattern across this dune. All right, our next step is you'll see that the individuals are putting the propagals in the two to three inch hole. Another group is watering. They fill the hole up with water. And we have, as they go in front, we're putting in slow release nitrates. I'll get it. So you can see this process. Now we're going to do this all the way across the dune. We're going to end up putting 500 propagals in a hundred foot property dune. So once again, we laid the, uh, what I call the template down. You can see we're going to aug the hole. This is what your sea oaks come in. This is a delivery of 500. Put them in. Okay, so once again, the holes have been augged, the propagals have been put in. There's been slow nitrate release fertilizer. The watering, we fill up the whole hole. And then secure them into the dune. This is our process. So here's our end result. This is a hundred foot uh, coastal property and we planted uh, 500 sea oaks. 
So now all we need is good weather, no northeasters, and give this time to grow. Great job by you and your students. So let's talk about this 2017 nesting stats on our local beaches. We had 61 nests, 58 were loggerheads, two green, and one leatherback. We lost 14 from Hurricane Irma, and we were unable to determine the status on another one. So out of those 61 nests, we were able to inventory 46, and we estimate the number of total eggs to be 5,906, and of hatched eggs, 4,606. We also had 35 non-nesting emergences, which were all from loggerheads, and we call those false crawls. That's when a turtle emerges from the ocean, but it doesn't for some reason or other. Statewide, the numbers are very good. In 2017, there were 96,912 loggerhead nests, 53,102 green turtle nests, which was a record year, and 663 leatherback nests. There are two species that do not nest up in our part of the state, but um, they had 10 confirmed Kemp's Ridleys and no confirmed Hawks bills, but six are pending identification. All the data is important because the results are used to evaluate and minimize the effects of human activities on turtles and their nests and identify important areas for enhanced protection, protection or land acquisition. It also helps to determine appropriate response strategies during environmental disasters such as oil spills and weather disasters like hurricanes. Sea turtles are important because they've existed for more than 100 million years and they're an important component to the health of our oceans and beaches. The way the oceans go or the way the turtles go and the way the turtles go are the way we go. Their hatched egg shells and undeveloped eggs and deceased hatchlings are good sources of nutrients for vegetation which builds the dunes that protect our home and businesses. Green sea turtles eat the seagrass, which needs to, to stay short in order to be healthy. Seagrass beds provide breeding and developmental grounds for fish, shellfish, and crustaceans that we consume. Leatherbacks help the fish population by eating jellyfish, which, which consumes fish larvae. Kemp's Ridleys eat marine sponges, which can overtake the coral reefs if left them. So ways that you can help are very simple. Keep the beach clean, dark, and flat, which provides a good nesting habitat for the turtles. If you would like to contribute financially to BSTP, we have an, a donation page on our website. You can choose to send in a check or do um, an online donation through PayPal or a credit card. And we have varying degrees of our donation structure, structure that was um, suitable for just about anybody. And you can also adopt a nest. Well, what is a nest adoption? It's a symbolic nest adoption in the name of your choice, and it's a great way to show your support for sea turtle conservation, and it's a very unique gift for the environmentalist in your life. Each nest adoption will get a letter via postal mail, which includes the nest location, a BSTP window decal, and a link where you can check the hatching, the nest hatching success results later on. Each nest will also contain a laminated sign with your name on it. Your donations are used to help maintain our all-terrain vehicles, supply nest materials such as wood stakes, netting, staples, survey tape, anti-predation screens, and light barriers. We have administrative costs, our mobile phone service, our website domain, business cards, brochures, corporation filing fees, our office supplies, and of course our educational materials. We have very, very extensive exhibit, which includes exhibit boards, brochures, children's activity booklets, and also volunteer support in the form of training materials. Additional resources on our website include our links page, you can also go to myfwc.com, which is the official Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission website. 
conserveturtles.org, which is the sea turtle conservation, the sea turtle Sea Turtle Conservancy, and fws.gov, which is the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The Sea Turtle Grant Program is managed by the Sea Turtle Conservancy, and each year the Grants Committee selects education, conservation, and research proposals for funding. In 2017, they awarded over $3 million to 24 different projects across the state. That is funded by proceeds from the Sea Turtle license plate, which you can purchase for your vehicle. In closing, we'd like to say thank you to all of our friends and supporters from across the country and here at home in Northeast Florida. Thanks and have a great year. Happy turtling!